Hi everybody, welcome to episode 71 of the Run to the Hills podcast sponsored by Chia Charge. If you want to fuel your adventure with real food made with real ingredients and head over to www.chiacharge.co.uk. <sighs> Deep breath. <laughs> oh wow, your public speaking is coming along a treat. I needed to breathe in before I started that sentence though and that was the... Our kids often have to do like uh, recite poems and stuff. Yeah. The French love that. <laughs> and uh, I'm always like, take a deep breath so that you can uh, say the whole verse. And they're like, oh, mom. <laughs> I find it when I do my little YouTube videos that if I, I've got to be really mindful because I've, like I say, I run out of air before I'm due to finish the um, sentence. How are you doing, Edwina? Have we, had, have we had a happy new year? What has is, what is happened? What day are we? What day are we? It is a blur, isn't it? I'm, you know, when I'm out running, I say happy new year to people and it feels a bit strange, that it's, but it's only the third or the when, fourth. When do you stop saying happy new year as well to people? Yeah. It's, a, it's a weird one, isn't it? I'm, oh, I love Christmas. Not so bothered about new year. But and I love all the time around Christmas, but I'm so happy when it's over. I mean, literally, Sunday, kids went, <laughs> we didn't have your bank holiday shenanigans that you've had in yeah. the UK. So kids went back to school on Monday. So Sunday, Bryn and I were like, right, Christmas, done. Decorations. They're down, are they? Down, back, in the bag. Everything's back in the bag. <laughs> Trees done. Trees out in the river. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we do the leave the Christmas bag down from the loft because for the next week or so, you find that odd Christmas decoration. So well, I've started doing that. But yeah, it's nice to be back. It's nice to be back to a little bit of normality, isn't it? I'm hoping. Oh, well, I really enjoy Christmas. But I'm hoping to get a bit more of a routine in my daily life. I'm all over the place, Eddie, and um, yeah, I seem to think, why, why can't I do all this stuff? I've got all these extra hours, but I'm doing, I'm being no more productive. It's not a time for productivity, though, is it? It's a time no, 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 for no. relaxing. Yeah, my kids have gone back. They've gone back to school for their holiday now because we total time that they spent on the ski slopes and between them it was over 100 hours of skiing Whoa, in the two yes. <gasps> they were pretty tired yeah <laughs> we were like when we were norm when we were kids on christmas holiday we didn't do anything you know yeah. you had christmas day you went and saw like some relatives between christmas and new year our kids haven't stopped and they don't you know they they're actually really bad at being at home with nothing to do yeah. Because they're always doing an activity or they're at home recovering from activity. <laughs> so when they like have a chunk of time, which they don't often get, they're like, what, what do I do? Uh, and I'm like, well, this is when you, this is when you just stop and relax. They're in, they can't do that. Anyway, so nice <laughs> for them. Back. And I've started, I've started to train and I lay on the floor on the gym yesterday <laughs> And I felt a bit <laughs> overawed by how big my belly was and uh. <laughs> how much, how, what a long journey I've got to do to get back into, not back into fitness and then fitter. I want to be way yeah, yeah, than I was yeah. before. So it's like, it's not just getting fit again. Cause you never like, I can always, I can carry on running. You know, I still yeah. maintain, maintain fitness, don't you? As an active person, but to get back into shape is like, oh my God, I've got like six weeks of pain. And then I've got <laughs> such a long journey to get yeah. into this sort of shape. And I like, did lie on the gym floor and thought, shall I just, shall I just not bother? Shall I just stay here? And... <laughs> Most people just go to the gym. They don't, they don't physically do anything. They oh God, move the machines. I go to the gym, uh, <clears throat> I go with a mate. I try and go with a mate who we sort of like mix our strength programs to try and do like the same sort of thing. It's so much more fun. And we go in and we go, go, you know, we don't stop and we do yeah. exercise after exercise and we do stability work and core work and glute work. And then we do our whatever our strength rate. We go, we don't stop. I mean, look, like you've got proper callus. Mm. Oh, yes. Proper callus. I mean, and then some special, I'm sorry, but guys come in and like this, do like, four pull-ups and then like scroll on their phone <laughs> for like 20 minutes or just stare at us like, yeah. yeah and then like do another exercise and then they go like what i mean yeah. what what anyway been to anyway. the gym tick gym tick i've started my base building i am going to be really strict about it because often i 
I get bored and then I work too hard. Yeah. And base yeah. building is all about lots of volume with a low heart rate, which is, I like the volume, but I also like the heart rate. <laughs> but in order to do day after day of volume, you need to have a low heart rate because otherwise you're just going to be knackered or yep. injured. So I'm trying to be the two days I've been training. <laughs> I've done really well. <laughs> I've been really straight and been like, right, don't let that heart rate go over 140. Yeah. Keep in that zone. Start building the volume. And I feel really refreshed. I was a little bit nervous that I had pretty much the whole of December with very little training compared to what I've ever done. I think that's probably the longest and the least amount of training I've ever done in my since I was like 18. But uh, apart from pregnancy, but uh, now I've started back training. I feel I don't, I, I just sat on the bike this morning. I was going to ski, but it was pouring with rain and I didn't feel like I'd been off it. I was able to sit on it for 90 minutes, push about Ooh. between two to 2.5 watts per kilogram. You'll learn all about this. <laughs> Felt pretty good. I was like, actually, I think the rest, the recuperation of the rest has set me up, has set me up well. I've been hiding yourself up though. My bum is aching from only about three times on the bike. Uh, yeah, it's not very comfortable, yeah, but it's the, a little razor but, blade, that saddle. Got, got. Every, yeah, one, you need to invest in a good saddle. Um, I can point you in the right direction. You need a really good pair of cycling shorts. Oh, yeah, see, I'm just on my short and, shorts. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Protect. It's so hot. I didn't strip off. I was like, Protect literally. Brown jewels. You can't just blast them on the seat. <laughs> Their work might be done, but you don't want to be walking around like John Wayne. Yeah. The, other, the other thing I do is where you've got your tri bars set up is I put a towel over the top of that fit. I don't oh, yes, I've got my towel. Yeah, so I put another, I put a big towel over the top, which then you can sit back quite a lot to take the pressure off the seat bones yes so i change my position on the seat quite a it's going to take i think it take i don't get it anymore but i used to get really <laughs> sore bum when i started back if i'd had a break from cycling but I, I think it takes two weeks and when you go on the bike when you and then you're really sore it just it'll take five minutes just suck it up get in with it anyway <laughs> tell me tell me tell me about your swift i saw it on strava i saw chris Froome was looking at those watts going He's a My follower God. now. <laughs> He's a big fan. <laughs> it was good. You know, I the week had just gone wrong as far as getting out to do that second workout. So I strolled through the Zwift and I thought, well, there's something. It was like five times five minutes, five on five off or something like that. I can't remember what it was. And I think the power, it was appropriate to where it thought I was. I'm sure that it's gone up now since I did this test or the, the other day. Um, yeah, it was just five on five off. And it's funny because it wasn't a hard workout as far as my heart rate was concerned, but I could definitely feel it. And it was, a again, a different, I want to mention the 200s and the 400s of the week. Um, just a different sensation in my legs. When I cycle in the past, it's just been a commute bike ride. It's with no purpose. So I definitely see this as a place. And like you mentioned, with the weather not great outside, you don't want to dodge all of those runs because when the event comes around, it might not be great. So, you, But every now and again, I think um, it's good. And just the way that my week panned out, I thought, yeah, I'll do this on the uh, this workout on the on the turbo. And then I did this, is it FTP, whatever that is? Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. I was going to say, give you, you did it. Yeah, the short one. There's a big one. <clears throat> and I did the short one because it said if you're under 60 kilos or new to cycling, um, then do the shorter version. I think I got up to about 210 watts, but then the average was, I think, 156. So, yes, yeah, very technical, but my God, I was, so, I was sweating. My shoes were full. I could feel my socks were wet. I had to grab the, the chia charge bars. Although, like I said, the effort wasn't there. I just felt like I can run and run and run, and it seems to be fine nutritionally. Um, very rarely eat when I'm running, to be honest, apart from in an, an event. Different to running when it's I want to just get those calories down as quick and easy as possible without any real eating. The bike's a lot easier to. Oh my god, I love it! When this morning I have I have like a table over my handlebars that you can oh. move, and Bryn uses it as his stand up desk. Yeah, and I, it must be disgusting. He goes, "Is he in there now?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> uh, and I and I start and I have my cup of tea as I'm drinking as I'm setting up Swift, and then I have my snack bars cheer charge bars and then I'm my precision hydration in one bottle so you gotta make sure i have two water bottles oh. with electrolyte in because you're sweating sweating a lot so you've got to you do sweat so much yeah. yeah you've got to have a bottle of electrolyte and then I have a bottle with a bit of tailwind in as well 
and then I have a bar because you do get more hungry. Yeah. I find on the bike, maybe it's also because you, your mind wanders and you're like, hmm, what shall I do? I think I'll have a snack. <laughs> but I kind of like the fact as well that when you're cycling, the mental change of it as well, you can like zone out, you can cycle, you can... Yeah. Um, you can like, whereas when you're running, it's quite, you know, you're mentally, you're always looking, you know, is there a hole? Is there a car? Is there somebody? Yeah. My dog, what's my dog doing? You know, but on the bike, you can just, I often, and I often like use the warm up to like WhatsApp, reply yeah. to my emails. And then I'm like, right, set in, get in on Zwift. Get I just had my YouTube on and I was watching, I did it, I, know, I uploaded a, we did a park run at the weekend and I popped that as my latest YouTube video. And I just, checked it basically because sometimes there's some language that slips by that slips through the net <laughs> so, is it your language no <laughs> it's never <laughs> not, not usually as for the sweating i just wear like a sports bra and i've got some old cycling shorts get invest in some cycling shorts i don't put a fan on because what i quite enjoy the sweating because it's winter and i don't sweat when i go outside but um i also uh, found that when it came to summer I was really well heat adapted and oh. I'm sure it's from doing treadmill and bike yeah. in my hot room and the sweating <laughs> and um and I'd never found that the switch then to like racing in the heat and stuff yeah I don't know that's <laughs> hashtag not scientifically proven but also <laughs> I kind of like the suffering of it I kind of like the like sweating and the the only thing as well with the swift and the hotness is that it can increase your heart rate so you can feel that you're working much harder. Oh, that's a good point. Because yeah. you're hotter than you are. So a fan will bring that heart rate down. But Well, I'm not I buying a fan. It cost me, it seems like every time I had to buy a new heart rate monitor because my old one was on Bluetooth. I didn't have to buy these things, Craigie. I'm not understanding. Yeah, but I think swift without a heart rate monitor is, is not, it's not... You, you've got to have a heart rate monitor for Swift. Well, I had to, the first time I was on it, I had my Garmin going the same time as Zwift, so it was synced quite a few times. So yeah. I'm trying to do it all through Zwift. All things, all this like technology, I'm like, get it set up so that yeah. you can get on and use it, then you'll use it. Otherwise, if it's complicated and it doesn't work and it doesn't, it's, oh, it just causes rage and yeah. then... It's you might as well have gone for a run by the time that you've done that. I do fancy uh, dipping into one of those events. That might be the next thing I do is um, whatever they are. But I'll be appropriate to the level I'm at. I think I'm a I'm either an E or a D, whichever one it is, because I'm a new starter. This morning I was like, shouldn't I do a race? Because that all, and I was like, no, because there is no way that is base building. The yeah. races are absolutely. When I do them, if Bryn comes in, I literally cannot take my eyes off the screen. They are like. <laughs> Full on, you cannot breathe yeah. because if you do, you get dropped. You have to be in the group yeah. because you get a draft, you'll learn it all. It, 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 they are brilliant, but they are absolutely. Sometimes they take me like three or four days to recover. Ridiculous. They're ridiculous. So I don't want to go into a race where there's literally pointless me being there. So I'd find my level and then yeah, after that race with my go in lower. If you're yeah. too good, they'll just disqualify you at the end. Okay. Um, yeah, so they all say like how many watts per kilogram. So when you're next on it, have a little look. But I would go like 1.5 to 2 or something like that. Yeah. And then nearly always, and choose a race where there's loads of people because if there's only like 10 people, then yeah. you're, everyone will split up and you want to be racing people. So choose a time of day when like 6 o'clock in the evening when lots of people. And would it just, see, after the race, depending on how I did, would it will tell then you, it will say you need to do your FTP again because you're... Okay, it wouldn't just do it. It would tell me I need to do no, it. No, I think, you, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, I'm so sorry, everybody. But hopefully that's inspired people. If you're thinking of new year, new you, new goals, I hate <laughs> all that. I hate it. But hopefully it's inspiring you to do a little bit of... Um, Cross training, adding yeah. it into your life, changing, changing it up. Don't add more. Don't add more volume. Don't go new year. I'm just going to do more. Think of different ways. I'm a little bit worried. I might just end up doing more and more and more stuff. So far, we're not there yet. But yeah, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's good. This week, we chat to Nicola Dawson. She is the founder of Epic Trails, a Facebook group and a running group which encourages and enables um, people to get into trails, find local trails around them to meet as a group and to increase their confidence about uh, perhaps running somewhere they haven't run before, perhaps running further than they've run before. She is a lady who inspires everybody around her, not just trail running, she does all sorts of incredible things. She's a busy mum, working mum as well, and also an established ultra runner now. She's gone from 
not running to now doing lots and lots of um, ultra races, if, especially if you're Scottish based, you'll know all of them. What a lady and what a lovely lady. So here is our chat with Nicola Dawson. everybody we are delighted to welcome nicola dawson to the podcast today just a pre-caveat warning for this interview all of us have got dogs in the room at the moment it's christmas time they're a little bit excited um there's trees up they don't know what to do with themselves and we're not going to edit it out because we love dogs on this podcast yeah. so we're just adding canine canine interviewees to this podcast hi nicola how are you where are you and have you been for a run today Hi, Eddie. Hi, Gary. I Hi. am up in Mogai, um, which is, if those who know, just in just north of Glasgow, start the West Helen Way. Um, no running yet this morning, but I have had the dog walk home from school, which is more of the pool than the walk. <laughs> We were just talking about that, weren't we, Gary? Because my road outside is like ice down to our trail. And yeah. normally I would r just put the dogs on the lead and run down with them. But because it's ice this morning, they were like, and I'm, I'm, re I'm really bad because I've never trained them on the lead because no. they're on the lead for like 20 seconds a day to get on this trail. But then I was being pulled down this ice going, <laughs> I'm always in a bit of a wrestle because to walk Rick's, is a real pain to be honest with you. All he wants to do is run. But then when I want to go for a run with Rex, I want him to pull and uh, you know not be kind of tripping over. So it's always like it's kind of uh, a confusing situation. <laughs> My dogs can hear your dogs now, Nicola. <laughs> but how? Yeah, how old's your dog, Nicola? <laughs> Eight months. We've only just got her. We got oh, her two man. weeks ago as a puppy, a rescue puppy. So it's still very, very new. Oh, she's a rescue puppy at eight yeah. months. Is she, is she a Vizsla? Yes, Vizsla cross with something. And you're I'm hoping gonna... to go running with her? Is that the, the idea? To... That, that is the plan. Started doing, not, she's too young to do proper runs. So occasionally I've put the harness on just to let her stretch her legs. But it is a, she's one of those sprinters. Let's go as fast as we can, as quick as we can, and then gone. And would it be, it. Uh, can he cross eventually? Is that the thought? I'd like to, or else just even just getting her out, getting some company in the hills. So I'm not just talking to myself and the sheep, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's uh, why I love, I love running with my dog so much, is that I can go out anywhere and never feel like I'm on my own because yeah. I've got my little friends. Rex spooks me from time to time. No, it's nice, the company, but then sometimes you can pick up on things that I'm oblivious to, and it's like, oh, my goodness, what is that? What, what's They're that good, the though, trees? aren't they? Because they, they know if someone's around the corner. Well, Lindy yeah. goes around the corner to greet, with for, ready for the full greeting <laughs> of anybody. Uh, but in the dark, it's in the dark if they suddenly stop and yeah. stare, and you're like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is quite spooky. Right, well, we de always deviated. It's great, this. Um, I'd love to know a bit about your journey and I suppose, you know, your journey as an athlete, as a runner, and how you got into ultra running. Yeah, well, me, uh, running and sport is something I've always done, just all my life. Um, you know, I remember as a youngster, you know, the cross countries and the horrible weather, especially on the west coast of Scotland, when you're yep. sand dunes and rain, and oh, it was delightful. Um, <laughs> Great. I don't actually know why I keep running. Um, <laughs> then I got into did my first like half marathon at 17, first lived London at 21. Then just injuries got in the way. And I was told we well, are probably never going to do a proper distance, but just crack on shorter ones, you know, up to maybe 15k, you'll be yeah. fine. So that's what I did. I was I was quite happy running those, running the trails around my way. Um, and then it was a few years ago, because obviously I said living more guy, West Helen Way, I keep seeing all these runners. And it, that race called the Highland Fling, and then That's there's right. like the West Highland Way race, and others like that. And I'm like, right, seriously, <laughs> I've got to do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> so quite literally, I went from nothing. I entered the Highland Fling with an entry time from 2003 as oh, a wow. qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> Did nobody <laughs> check it? I think they just supposed to have like a time scale. <laughs> have a time scale so i thought cool. i put it in and it's <laughs> love it love it um maybe there is now sorry john if there is um <laughs> and there's what i mean is like can we do this and he's like well you've got the endurance you've got the, you've got the stamina you've got it in you just if, how you how you hold up if you can do it so that must have been back in i would have been 2018 or 19 i did it i can't work out with lockdown and covid i don't know what years no oh, no well. i was just saying that it's gone. It's, it's gone it's gone years ago um so yeah did it uh 
did a marathon just before it as my training run and then did the fling. I swore at the end of that I was never running ever, ever again. It was the worst thing ever. Um, I couldn't walk. <laughs> I think I was sick twice on the way back down Loch Lomond Shore, but oh, I think that's no. more husbands driving. Come on, it's a bit oh. bendy, those roads. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, yeah. awful, isn't it? It's, it's awful. 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 And you're so like, I, th- I never ran that far. Oh my God, no. this drive is taking 16 hours. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm never, I'm never doing it again. Never, ever, never running it. And then I was like, oh, this has been entry. I think I might just, um, oops, what happened there? How did that entry happen? That button finger slip. And I seem to enter it for the following year. <laughs> awesome. So unfortunately, though, the following year didn't quite happen because I had a really bad accident two weeks before it. So I got... Two weeks before, it's all been going brilliantly. Training is on top. I was like, this year, I'm going to smash it. I will do, not win it or anything, just actually be alive at the end of it. And um, I had a bike car accident. I broke both wrists. Oh my so goodness. that was two weeks before, you know, that way sitting going, uh, and any after that accident going, hmm, right. If it's only one, I'm sure I could run it, splint it, I'll be, able, I'll be fine. But as the week got on, the, the injury got worked. We worked out how bad it was. And yeah. then the Thursday yeah. in hospital, getting both wrists operated <gasps> on. Oh, my goodness. And the Friday, the race medic phoned me and said... Were, um, you, were you still hopeful then? As you're having the anaesthetic, <laughs> yeah, were you totally. like, still could be done. I can get my Salomon flasks with just my fingers. Yeah, liquid, liquid gel. <laughs> yeah, I was like, legs still work. They're not too bad. Just bumps oh. and bruises. They're not bad. Oh. Yeah, and he phoned me. He's like, you're not running. I was like, oh. <laughs> Can I help? So they stopped me yeah, at the start line. Sure. Yeah. Two rests that didn't do anything. Yeah. And I kind of pointed people in the right direction. Oh, you're so sweet to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but then it was the worst day ever. The weather looked absolutely horrendous. I was like, thank goodness I wasn't running that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, if, you, if you're there helping out in some capacity and the weather's not great, you do think, oh, well, I'm, wish, I'm glad I've missed this one. <laughs> How long did it take to recover from the, from the wrist? How long did that last for? It's, They've never recovered properly. Oh, well, okay. The operations now, so and they never one of them's never going to be the same. But I yeah. just had to adapt, and that's what I, what I do. Um, I used to coach tennis um, part time, just as a hobby. I've always loved tennis, and yeah. I've never held a racket since. So oh, I re- I requalified and transferred and did my level two triathlon coaching qualification, so I can still coach people, especially awesome. younger ones, because that's what I love. Oh, so yeah, I did that. And are you, is that all right? Swimming? Have you tried swimming since you? It's hard and sore. Yeah. But it's just starting to... I was... I'm not a swimmer. I hate swimming. Okay, I have to say, not. I really hate... No. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Swimming's not good. so common, isn't it? A, a lot of runners who maybe dabble in triathlon, it's always a swimming they uh, seem to like the least out of the three disciplines. Well, when you've got, got a I, child... Yeah, my child's a fish. My, ch- my child, oh. She's a fish. She does 100 in, like, one minute three. <gasps> Exactly. Yeah, that's know. really fast, that's Gary. Yeah. Especially for us triathletes, so we're like, <laughs> if we if I did a one twenty, I'd be like smashing it, and I'd only be able to do one. She probably does that again and again and again. Just twelve. <laughs> so how? So are you still? Are you running now? When? When I? Yeah. I, yeah. So you're back running. Wrists are all right. The fine for running. I'm just like uber cautious and anything. Just I can't. I can't take the risk of falling on them. Yeah. But yeah. Back. Back to running. Back to doing all the ultras. Um, which is it's great. I just love them. Try to pick up different ones. Um, unfortunately, COVID got in the way for a few that I had planned, like the West Helen Way race, which I was like so looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now just trying to kind of see what other ones I can do and pushing it a bit further all the time now. And do you still have those thoughts when you do it of, um, because I heard, a, I think it was Jason Coop said, if you don't say during an ultra four to five times, that's it, I'm quitting, I'm never doing it again, <laughs> then you're not running, you're not you're not a true, you're not running it hard enough. Do you still have those thoughts when you run ultras now or with the experience of like, actually, this pain is temporary? Yeah, I know it's temporary. Well, my way of doing it is I never race in my head that I'm running an ultra. So I actually write on my number, I write it upside down um, what each checkpoint is and what the distance is. Yeah. So then Great I just tip. look at my number Great and I there, see. As long as it's not raining. Yeah, that's it. I go right. I'm checkpoint one is say like twelve k. Right, I'm running twelve k, and then after that I go. What's the next one? Checkpoint two is fifteen k. Right, I'm running fifteen k, yeah. and that's exactly the way in my head I, I can I can do it. 
if I thought I'm running like 60, 70, 80, I'd be like, not happening. That's a great, that's a great way. That's that exactly great what tip. I do. I just go checkpoints, checkpoint. If I think of the enormity of, uh, of what's ahead. So Nicola, what does a typical day look for you now at the moment? Um, how I, our listeners love to know how we juggle everything with training, with work, with kids, dogs. dogs. <laughs> yeah, then you had a day extra. <laughs> that's the harder part. <laughs> Usually just now, I work full time as well. So it is a bit of getting up, um, usually doing the, the kids run or if the fish is at swimming, then it's taking her to swimming. Those mornings I'll try when she's in the pool for an hour, I can get a run for an hour. Don't like it at that time in the morning. All I do once I'm out is just that getting out in the trainer's on and sitting in the car and procrastinating that it's dark <laughs> and cold and wet, but it's good. Yeah. And now I've switched a bit to actually just taking the dog out now, um, do the school drop off. And then I'll always plan in. I have in my calendar for work lunch. It's my lunch break. It's my lunch hour. I will get out. If I'm in the gym, on the bike, running, that's just my escape to clear my head. Usual back to work, pick up kids, back home, juggle 20 million children's activities. And again, it's trying to fit them in around that. I've got certain nights I've got my activities and we share a lot with other mums who can do drop off, who can do pick up. And then like Monday night, I'll go running. Tuesday night is my swimming lessons, as I call them. I learn to not drown a bit more. <laughs> and then <laughs> Wednesday night, club night. Thursday night is I take out my, my group runs. So that's my guided ones that I take out. So that's always yeah. fun. And then weekend is always Saturday morning is my long run. So I'll get yeah. out with friends and just head up in the hills. You have to be quite present with each task. Oh, I try to. As much as I can, I'll have to try to focus because, you know, you've only got so much time and it's trying to fit it in. Like when yeah. the littlest one has her swim lessons, I'm like, right, I've got half an hour. What can I do? And it's in the yeah. pool. Just do it. Quite often, the amount of things I've taken sitting on my turbo bike, you know, if it calls things I can sit that I can yeah. just turn the legs, but at the same time, be in a call or watch something that I need to watch, yeah, yeah. get work done. Yeah. If I can multitask, it's done. When we're trying to fit those things in, like, it's okay. Like, okay. So you've got half an hour, e even though some people would be like, oh, it's not worth it. You know, it's not worth it. But at, if you do it all the time, the consistency oh, yeah. all builds up, doesn't it? Cause sometimes I'm like, I've only got 25 minutes. Shall I bother? Shall I bother? Shall I just go and have a coffee and chat to my mates? <laughs> but then it's like, it, oh, you, it all adds up, doesn't it? It all adds up. And I do think Definitely. it makes us better ultra runners. The juggle and fitting it all in makes the focus. And then when it actually comes to the ultra, you think I have done, given up and, you know, done so much for this, juggled so much. There's no way I'm not doing this. Oh, definitely. And I think one of the ones I've started doing recently, which I am the worst for is stretching. I'm like, I think we all do. We tell people to stretch, yeah. but I just don't do it. And I've had so many injuries. And I was like, I need to stretch. I need to do it properly. And I found a couple of apps on my phone, which are like 20, 25 minutes. So yeah. I've now worked out, I can put the dinner in. I've got 20 minutes. I can put the <laughs> app on. And when the dinner goes ping, I stop. Yeah. But actually, the I'm oven, getting bit of warmth better. from the oven. Bit of stretching. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel quite exhausted that you're on all the time. See, maybe from watching TV, then I'm if I'm not from rolling, I'll kind of have like a level of guilt that oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. But what I do not do, and I'm not too sure if you do it, even not chatting about this. Quite often I hear about this uh pre-run ritual of kind of warming up for the run. And I don't. I'm out the door and I'm running. It's, I uh, do this. I do this. Cup of tea. <laughs> I down my last bit of tea and I'll be like, I'm a got I'm half an hour. Half an hour, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I do set I set a lot of my clients pre-run activation exercises. Yeah. But I'm quite good at I start, maybe you are too, Nicola. I start really slow any of my activities. I have no problem yeah. with a 10, 15 minute like build, especially as I get older. It takes me like 20 minutes to build up to it. Oh, it definitely is. It's the build up. I'm like, you know, I can't go out and sprint this. It's a gentle try to work, wake myself up on that run. Good couple of K to go, well, right, I'm here. I'm <laughs> present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Move away from running for, for for a few minutes. Um, yeah, tell us a bit about your day job. Yeah, what I do, I work for ScotRail for the trains. Oh, so wicked. yeah, so audit risk and compliance manager. So basically making sure we should be doing the things we should be doing. Yeah. Um, and all our contract side of things. So it's quite a pretty kind of a busy day job. That's my and, favorite but then mode also, of transport a train. It's great actually, especially up here. I've now been getting out a lot more of our runs. We've been doing point to points. Yeah. So actually um, using the train to get um, some of the boys up the West Island Way. So it's great. You can get on, get further up and then run back different stations and jump on the back as well. Do you get a free transport working for Scotland? You don't <laughs> You were going, get free transport, got any discount codes? 
Yeah. I do have a staff pass, yes. You can't answer hey. that. Like, that's probably... <laughs> I love a train journey. I love a train journey. I, I, we, the trains, we've not got any trains near us here, but I love taking the kids on a train journey too. It's so much easier than in the car and you can sit yeah. and have a tea and see the world go by. With COVID, are you working remotely now? Or are you back in the office or how's that panned no, out? I I'm still back at home. And obviously we thought we were getting some slight risk movement, but then Scottish government, we're back working at home again. So yeah. yep, catching tables, that's it. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, yeah. hard, isn't it? It's hard. Let's go back to running. Let's not talk about proper jobs. Right. Uh, Epic Trails, you started this group. Are we right in thinking about that? Can you tell us a little bit yeah. about it? Is it just Scottish based runners? What's it all about? Yeah, Epic Trail started kind of at the start of lockdown. So I previously been doing guided runs for um, a local company, um, Trail Fest, and just when COVID hit, um, it was just easier just for them for not to continue. I think it's just logistically it just wasn't working. Um, and there, they moved out over to France and to Chamonix. I'm very jealous. I oh. want to go out there. I know it's amazing. Anytime um, we've got a spare room. Oh, great. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna remember that one. Yeah. Um, so. But everyone was asking me, because I was still here, um, are you doing leading runs? What's happening? Were you getting back up? So I was like, I'm still here. I'll just set up myself. Yeah. So the hardest part for me is the tech. I'm like, a what? A Facebook page? And I've got to do like <laughs> sign-ups. And what's a, what's a website? Um, yeah. I'm like, I just run. <laughs> so started off just during lockdown when no one else could get out. I just started posting my posts, my, like, my pictures of where I've yeah. been and just trying to encourage people. And roundabouts, a lot of, you know, like mums and females and things. And it's it's like, you guys can go, anyone can go out and run. They're local to you. Here's the trails, here's the routes. And so many people off the back of them were actually asking me, you know, where is it you go? Can you share your routes? And I wasn't one for Strava. I'm like, I'm like, no, I can't do Strava. I can't do it. I'm too competitive. This thing's called segments and things. I'm like, no, 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 can't yeah. do it. <laughs> I have now started doing it, and I'm now chasing segments. And it's like I've never <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> like as people said, it was the best way to share the roots. So again, putting them up, and people will always ask me for ideas, and that's saying, "Oh, we love it. We've tried this one. Where's this one? Can we? When can you show us?" So as soon as restrictions started easing, I started putting guided runs on. So yeah. it's just every Thursday we set up um, it's just one of the local ones to sign up and it's either like 6k or 8k and it's just getting people out in the trails um, the head torch is on just now because it's dark and yeah. it's very social so we're stopping starting no one gets left behind and just having a bit of fun really would they just turn up uh, or would you have to say formally enter something to, to, to do one of the guided runs yeah I do have a booking system and it was really primarily due to COVID and the numbers because there was restrictions of how many people could uh, run in a group yeah. so that's why I set it up and it also just means that I've then got emergency contact numbers for people yeah. so it's just no one turns up and I don't know who they are but it's one of those dead easy to sign up for um, for the first year I did it for free simply because every month I was like I need to start charging but I don't quite know how to do that mm. yeah so eventually I was like, right, okay, after a year and a few friends giving me a kick saying, will you pay, charge, we want to pay you. Um, yeah. But it's, it's very little and all the money that we get is it's not for profit, it goes to charity. It sounds like a great pathway into running if you're new to trails. Do you find yeah. it's new trail runners or people with a bit more experience or just a, a, a mix? You get a bit of a mix. You get people who actually live locally that have never don't actually know the trails they're like yeah. how did i not know this was here just yeah. by going you know, like 10 meters off the main path and there's so many trails round about and you get a lot that are maybe confidence that aren't sure running you know at yeah. night especially the head torch mm -hmm. or yeah. going these places yourself or maybe the routes they don't have the confidence to go and explore yeah and a lot of it's social um especially during lockdown people are like this you know I, I know i can't wait for a thursday night just to get out and get running you know yeah. this is my sanity it's my like therapy class i read somewhere recently that if you run with um run in a social gathering and and you get that fun enjoyment hormone um it's like 17 percent better than you for you than going for a normal run 17 percent. 17 how they work that out <laughs> to be precise <laughs> to be precise good selling point i'll find the data for you but i love running i love a group run where it just goes so quick and you're just chitter chattering yeah yeah. That's my that's my perfect sort of running. The level of chat, the conversation level, <laughs> it does reach gutter level at some point. 
but it's hilarious it's hilarious gary you die especially when it's all women the stuff that comes out on yeah. the uh... <laughs> i just think it's fantastic anything we talk about this quite a lot on the on the podcast just anything to uh make the trails more accessible uh it's a, it's a super positive thing I'd, i don't i don't I, we do talk about covid uh but obviously you know we're still 2020 and 2021 and restrictions <laughs> so much stuff was cancelled or postponed and you mentioned earlier the west highland way race but yeah generally how how was that for your race calendar it was hard because the year before COVID was my accident and I'd lost race upon race upon race. Yeah. And I was like, right, I can now get back. This is it. I've got things like the West Helen Way race. I was going for the Triple Crown with the flying West Helen race and the devil. Yeah. I had lots of them. And then again, it was, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. And then all getting moved. Um, but it was trying to just not be too negative. There were some people I know that were just, well, I'm not going to do anything. But, yeah. but actually, I ended up doing so much. My mileage was ridiculous because there was all these virtual challenges. <laughs> so I love it. <laughs> you were like, I'm not doing Strava. No way. And now... Uh... <laughs> No. <laughs> You're like, so West Helen Way racing, how far have I run within a week? Okay. Yeah. I haven't heard anybody getting virtual burnout. I've heard I've have heard of a few injuries, people are going, I got that from doing. But I think because we were at home and there wasn't anything else to do, we weren't trying to cope with like kids' activities and everything else. It's amazing how much more time and energy you do have though to do these to do those sort of things. I struggled that vert the Lake and Hundred virtual run. That that you really did you did yourself over on that one weren't you trying to do something else as well at the same time you did like two i don't know i i put it off and i think and some epic weekend of running to try and get the 100 miles it wasn't uh, <laughs> it wasn't good but have your races um been postponed or cancelled most of them some were postponed some were cancelled most of them i've got back this year but then it ended up with the usual where you had three all in the same weekend and you're oh, like well, yeah. right which yeah. one am i going to pick yeah. i'm going to do them all and they've all ended up in like september what happened yeah. in september they all seem to be deferred to that month yeah, yeah. <laughs> it <was> like back. <laughs> it's all back to normal now and now it's actually this year i'm now going i've got to pay for races next year because yeah. everything got deferred a year <laughs> i'm gonna be skint you recently just did this uh, Tweed, Tweed Valley Ultra. It's funny, yeah. it's a coincidence, I was speaking to a friend on uh, oh, Saturday evening and he just, he, he ran it too with his wife. Um, and I just thought, yeah, he said he, he was raving about the race, but yeah, could you explain a bit about the route? Uh, I, I, probably my descriptions are probably like quite often I do them when I'm writing up my, write, my write-ups. I ran up a big hill, I ran down a hill, I ran round some more and up a hill, and then yeah. I have to work out where I actually ran. <laughs> but it was, a, it, was oh, it was an absolutely stunning day. It started up at Glen Tress, which for those who don't know, it's a mountain biking centre down at Peebles. Yeah. So, of course, straight up, started off the race, let's run up a red route and then down a blue oh, route. Wow. <laughs> that sounds and, like my, my everyday. Uh... Yeah. We're like, that's fine. And they said, don't worry, you're finishing a downhill. Great. So it was it was freezing cold, but beautiful. You know, that sky where you can see for miles. It was a, a cracking day. Um, over the hills along some of the, I think, the Southern Auckland Way. And the views were amazing. Lovely, lovely route. And actually, it was quite bizarre. I bumped into a girl, probably about 15k in. And we ended up having so much in common. So I ended up just running along with her the whole time. Because um, this was the furthest she was running. She was trying to get a qualifier time for the West Highland Way. And I was like, right, I'll just bit a company and just oh, I love it. do it yeah. for the social now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we ended up running the, the whole way together. And it was absolutely great fun. Um, although what they didn't say at the end, when they said you start running down a downhill, was that there was 5K of uphill. That blue run and red run that we kind of went up and down. Well, yeah. you kind of had to do that kind of the other way. Oh. And it was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it was just kept going up and up. You're like, must be here. Nope, they're still going up. Yeah. Still going up. Yeah. <laughs> but, I have, um, if I have the watch, if I have the profile on my watch, if I'm doing the route, and I get onto the profile at the end of the of ultras, and I'm like, where is the little arrow? How much more of that up? And then you see you're only like halfway up the last up, and you're like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> and which one did you opt for? The, is it, did they do 50K and a 60 or 65 yeah, 65. Or 60. it was 65 so i signed up for the 65 and then on the day you can actually change so there's a point it's only probably about 20 k in i think yeah. and there's like 65 straight ahead 50 take a left oh. but it was too early in so i was like nah of course it's 65 yeah 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 but as you're getting near the end you're like 
Should have taken 50. <laughs> They've been done by now. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah we, chat with, we chat with Jane Carnassus, didn't we? And in, in his book, uh, there's an option to cut the race a bit short. You could still take the shorter distance. And uh, yeah, he went He went for the long one. Of course he didn't. He's Dean. Yeah. <laughs> Dean. He um, can't not. Okay. No. As, as well as all your busy life, you also are a volunteer for the children's panel. Could yes. you explain a little bit to us about your role there? So the children's panel is, is unique to Scotland. It's the only country in the world that has this and it's part of the judicial system and it's basically the aim is protecting kind of the wealth, welfare and safeguarding of children so it's those children that come into the system could be a variety of reasons whether it's through you know the care and protection that they need within their home things just aren't going right and we make sure we put can compulsory measures in really to protect those children and make sure we're providing the best for them so it's it's all voluntary yeah um that would do it and it's kind of like in a tribunal format so there's three people that sit on the panel and we make those decisions about what's in the best interest of a child really and what would be a pathway if somebody one of our listeners were scottish based i suppose and they were you know wanted to volunteer is there a kind of a pathway to to, to do that yeah, usually um, each year um, they open up for people, to, a recruitment campaign really for people to volunteer and it's based on either your local authority where you live or where yeah. you work. So you can choose either which um, um, you prefer to kind of apply for. Um, so it's always good to keep an eye on the, you know, the children's hearing system, um, Facebook pages and on the media as well for, for when entries um, for recruitment open up. And as well, if you don't want to sit in the panel itself, there's loads of behind the scenes roles as well. You can really play an active part yeah. in the process to protect the children, if, whether or not you're front facing or sitting behind really. Yeah, it's yeah. really well worth, it's a worthwhile, you feel the benefit of doing it. How does Nicola Dawson relax? She so can't. New... She's just never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I sat down, put the TV on, pour a glass of wine. Within yeah. about, about 10 minutes, I'm snoring. Uh, <laughs> and then the next day, I have to rewind that programme. That my husband's going, did we not watch that yeah. last night? Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, we did. Yeah. I don't know. We do I that. We that put bit. it on. We put on whatever we're watching. We're going, have we watched this? And, we, yeah. and we'll start watching it. And we'll be like three or four minutes in. And then we'll be like, oh, we've watched this. We've watched this, yeah. I'm really fond of the Lake District. Any excuse to go west and hit the fells over there? Is there any the way you'd kind of make a beeline for? I like up the west coast. Just the scenery. We've got all the Monroes up there. Um, yeah. so you've got your trails, you've got the beaches, you've got the hills, you've got everything round about. Oh. But saying that, the lakes are somewhere I've started exploring. I've done, I've done the lap race twice now and really, really liking it, getting to see down there. And there's so many different opportunities. I'd like yeah. to get some more races down down that way across yeah, the border and come down proper sound for you that yeah uh, it, is. <laughs> it looks straight up in scotland what did i see somewhere it was a story a few years ago i saw um i think the thailand tourist board used a picture from a scottish beach and pretended it was somewhere in thailand and uh nobody realized for quite a while <laughs> we've got funny. all the nuggets today haven't we <laughs> where did i see it i've seen this <laughs> Oh, Nicola, you are such a, which is one of the reasons we wanted to get you on the podcast, an inspiration to us all of everything that you managed to juggle, not only just normal life in your own training, but encouraging other people to get into trail running, um, and especially women. And often when we talk to women, and we've had some real, really good advice on how you would encourage women to get into running ultras, what would you do um, to increase participation? And perhaps what do you see as the barriers and how we can overcome that? I think a lot of it is people think it's scary. Mm. It's that distance, I can't do it. And I'm like, there's nothing you can't do. You can do anything you put your mind to. But yeah. it's just starting off slowly. You know, just start off with lesser runs. If it's maybe the trail you're not sure about, we'll come and find a group, come and run with people. And people always think, oh, it's scary joining a group. You'll be too fast. And I'm like, yeah. no, come <laughs> along and try it. You don't know until you tried it. And I've always said to people, if you're not sure, I'll happily come out running with people just yeah. to actually kind of get them out and to show them what they can do. And then starting to kind of look at races, look at shorter ones and just slowly building it up and getting a coach. If you're not sure, actually get someone who knows what they're talking about to build up a training plan so that you're doing it in a, in a structured manner. Cause that's sometimes the hardest thing is knowing what you should be doing and when you should be doing it. And you don't want to do that burnout of just, I've got to run all the time to get the distance when yeah. you don't. Do you have a coach Nicola? I don't just now, I have had in the past, um, a lot of it is now self-coaching, just through, I know what I need to do. If um, I'm on the West Highland Way waiting list just now, I didn't get in oh. on the first ballot, 
So I'm in that 30. So I'm like, do it. So I think if I do get in, then I'm like, right, I will get someone to coach me just because yeah. that's I've not done that distance before. Mm. So I'm like, right, I need what's someone the, just what's to What's the try. furthest that you've run? Probably that would have been the flying. So that'd be 53 miles. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's a... It's a doubler, it's a, nearly. Yeah, it's a doubler. Would you get an email, you know, once you're, you're on the waiting list, somebody drops out? They've got everyone that got through in the first round has got to the 31st of December to take their place. Okay. So... Oh, it's like crossed. waiting. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I reckon though, I had an email from the Marathon de Mont Blanc. I, I was down to do the 90k, and I didn't get in the wait. And then they said, so many people haven't taken up their place. You can now have a place. That yeah. because I think everybody, so many people were like, enter, 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 yeah. and yeah. then entered everything. And then of course, with still postponed races, and I reckon you might be in. That would be so well, exciting. Uh... I wonder what the dropout rate is because every race I've been involved in, whether it's a big mass participation road race, the physical entries to the people who do it on the day, the, the numbers are staggering. There must be like a 25% yeah, people. it's huge. I think it's yeah. about 25%, I think, James. And even on the day, still lots of people who've bought bibs and not... You could just you hang know? around on the day. Take a... Somebody <laughs> <just>. <laughs> it's not far to go, is it? <laughs> oh, well, I think on the it's the uh, hey, that, this is the problem with these ones. The start line is quite literally about 500 metres from my door. Yeah. It's quite so, logistic. I, I always fancied the West Highland way, but the only thing that did put me off was not being midges. local. Yeah, the midges. Um, but not being local <laughs> with the uh, logistics. I, from what I... If I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to have a crew that come with you along the along the route. And um, yeah, I'll crew for you, ass. Gary. I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's quite a few yeah, people that do Scotland. come from abroad, yeah. and they do put on the page anyone can crew, and they they manage to find a crew because there's people locally that will happily just ah. help out and crew people. It's all excuse. Nicola's not having it, Gary. That's no, it. Yeah, I'll be just like... Get yourself up here. <laughs> <laughs> I've left it too late, haven't I? 2024, probably. My goodness me. Yeah. Well, it's on the list. It's on the list. Any, Any other races? Is... Oh, there we go. You got. You are. Oh, no, you go. Yeah. Oh, we, were, we were seamless so, for that one. Talking oh. about list. Sorry, it's your question, but then you're going to ask. You got the next one. Uh, what are, apart from West Highland Way, uh, in the next few years, what's on your bucket list of ultras to do? It's quite a few. I'd love to get into UTMB. That is one that I've keep entering. I've got the points. I'm like, <laughs> come on, one yeah. year, I will actually get there. Um, that's one I definitely would want to do. Um, nice little build up though. If you got into West Highland yeah. Way, get your hundred miler under your belt. That's it. And uh, and then another year. Another year's learning. That'd be awesome. Nice little UTMB. Yeah. Wouldn't mind Lakeland as well. Get that one done. And then there's a few, like the Cape Wrath, the ones like that, yeah. which are the multi-day. I've never done a multi-day, so a multi-day oh, I think would be really good. God, the multi-days are the best because they're like holidays. You finish yeah. running and you don't have to cook. Yes, you don't have fine. to do any laundry. You just get to lie around. It, it's the best. The longer the multi-day you can find. Cape Wrath's right. like eight days. Do it. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes, it, um, what's that with the, the dragon's back? That'd be a good multi day, wouldn't it? That's seriously hardcore. Yeah. That's the dragon's back is um is not a holiday. No. <laughs> I just watched the BBC documentary of that and it looks hard. Really hard. Good, Doable. But, hard. Uh, but again, just like you said, the mental the dropout rate of that is huge. And I think it's the mental the first two days are so hard that and people's bodies are so sore after two days, they can't get their head around the fact that they've got to keep going. Um whereas think Nicola, you'd be like, just checkpoint, just yeah. point to point, tick them off, tick them off, don't think about the full picture. Yeah. Talking about documentaries, <clears throat> excuse me, have you seen the is it Netflix? That one with that guy summits all the mountains over 8,000 feet in seven months. Well worth a watch if, you, if you've got a Netflix subscription. Yeah, really good. I think it was the most downloaded documentary last week in the seventh. Where are you most... pulling all these stats from? Please don't believe any stats that Gary's saying. <laughs> 100% accurate, my 100 stats. 100% accurate. <laughs> but it's super good. Even my 15-year-old daughter stayed and watched it. Would which, you, now, uh, I was going to ask, um, is it what sort of age range is that suitable for? Oh, yeah, there's no... There's no limbs being severed no, no on a rope. frozen bodies on a, on a mountain. And a six-year-old six alpine girl could take that. Uh... I think so, yeah. Very interesting. Really good story. Uh, and, you know, the guy didn't come from... Sometimes, you, you know, I've got nothing to do with mountaineering, but sometimes maybe I have this kind of impression that they come from privilege. It's quite an expensive sport. This guy wasn't, you know. I think he remortgaged his house to, to, to kind of fulfil his dream. Uh, yeah, pretty inspiring story, so... 
I'm pretty sure it's Netflix. Uh, something about 14 summits. So, but yeah, well worth the watch. <clears throat> Yeah, I've heard loads of people talking about it, and I think I'm the only person that doesn't have Netflix. <laughs> All right, okay. Or at least I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> I'm yeah, the same. Know. We have all these remote controls. I'm like, don't how I, if my husband's not there, I don't know how to turn the television on. I'm like, don't understand which button and where to go. And he's like, just I'll show you. And I'm like, I don't bother because if he's not here, I'm like, not bothered. Should we go and tell her fast? Well, I've actually got about seven questions here, so we'll see how. Well, we'll... I think we can answer that. Uh, let's ask them all. Let's go. Right. Some great. So we've done Nicholas the. Uh, <clears throat> okay, this is always a tricky one. It might not be the last song you listen to, but the last song you remember listening to. If you check our iTunes. Probably just have iTunes. iTunes. <laughs> yeah, do I? No, I don't actually. No, I don't. I might have. I don't know. Oh, this is really bad. Sparkle and shine from the nativity yesterday. At oh wow! <laughs> We've been doing nativity rehearsal for weeks, and yeah, I do play a part in the nativity because obviously I do have the mental age of like about an eight-year-old. Um, yeah, and that's a song that is still stuck in my head. Sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine. I don't even know what it is. No, no, do I? I just made it up. No, I imagine that. I'm not what... going to sing it because I'm, my singing is awful, so it's not happening. <laughs> oh, I love a nativity. You do love a nativity, don't you? Oh, we passed that one. We passed that, that one. one. Uh, what is on your Christmas list? Is it really bad? I've got a pair of poles. I don't run with poles. I want a pair of poles. Yes, I, do I it. I put that on my list. I have Which given poles? List. Which poles? I've, the ones from Harrier. Oh. So oh that's for yeah. those ones. Yeah, so I have given them, um, I've given them the link. I've sent it to them. <laughs> yeah. So you point. haven't gone as far as to buy them for yourself and just said... Not yet. No, yeah. okay. Just keep yeah. checking the package deliveries. Yeah. They look like they do some great stuff, Harry. Uh, they got some vests and poles and bits and bobs. Yeah, they're like a great company. Right. Strength and conditioning all the time or just when you are injured? All the time. Oh. I do yeah. love lifting weights. Oh, girl. Yeah, it's got to lift the weights. Yeah. And would you, this next question, would you lift heavy or maybe more body weight uh, style routine? Heavy? Heavy. Go, go back. Yeah. She's maybe not small got time to hang around just planking. Nicola's lifting probably... <laughs> whole of <laughs> a Monroe that might be small but I can lift big <laughs> would you run before or after breakfast probably after but I can quite literally have a bowl of porridge and just go straight out the door yeah very good that's a superpower that is now we know swimming's not going to answer this one but <laughs> what's your favourite swim bike or run 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 can you still bike now with your wrists, or is that too painful? It's taken a while to get back. I'm back on the road bike. I can't mountain bike because I can't. I've not got the flexibility, so the mountain yeah. bike had to go. But road bike's okay. But Do you I'm turbo fine. as part of your training? Yeah. yeah you so were that, swifter? No, I've not got a smart turbo. I've got a dumb turbo. That, that's also my, on my Christmas list, but I don't think that's going to arrive. <laughs> I've got one here. It's not even been put together. <laughs> Gary's had a turbo behind him for what four or five weeks now. I the helped him buy it. I told him what he needed, and it's still <laughs> sitting behind him, yet to be set up. It's coming. Won't be long, Eddie. Yeah, well, that's send it. Send it up. If you do, just send it up my direction. I'm, I'm, I'm I know going. this Nicola should be on it. You. <laughs> <Is> it, <yeah. laughs> Instead of the just, cheer charge packet, we'll send you a turbo to say thanks. <laughs> yeah, nice. that's a good trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh Nicola thank you so much for giving up your time to come to the podcast what a, I love an inspirational person who you not only are training for your ultras uh, working busy family giving up your time for other people you make me and Gary feel very inadequate with um, <laughs> with what we do uh, but hopefully inspired, inspired some people to <laughs> inspires yeah not inadequate inspired uh, to get to get out on the trails have a look up on epic trails if you're local to Nicola and um, also there's always time to fit in some more some volunteering is yeah. all we can always find time don't get that netflix subscription like nicola <laughs> and it really is a great facebook group i have to say you know i've uh, joined the group it's very i oh, know i'm not based in scotland um but it's always great to see other people's trails i really enjoy that oh yeah. thank you thanks for having me thanks a lot you take care <laughs> 
Oh, thanks, Leclerc. That was great. Thanks for giving up your time. And yeah, please do go check out the Epic Trails Facebook group. They have some uh, guided trails too, if you're not so confident about getting out on the trails yourself for the first time. And exciting news, Nicola messaged me this week to say that she'd got into West Highland Way and she, hey. would, be, she would be running in memory of John. So uh, that's really exciting. And we will definitely be following her journey, see how she get on. We'd love to hear from anybody else as well, perhaps that got into West Highland Way, especially if it's your first foray into uh, a long distance event results oh wow well, it's been it's been busy eddie with lots of fell races um and local races to me i think not massive these kind of hundred milers but lots of local fell races and one i that caught my eye on facebook i think it must have been it was either very brave or it was actually a fancy dress was encouraged <laughs> um and this was the new year's day fell race uh st john's and it's 2022 and uh lloyd taggart Apologies for making mistakes. Uh, I think these results are correct. I always have to say that. But Lloyd Taggart took the win in uh, 24 minutes and 58 seconds. And he's a male V50. I hope he doesn't mind bringing attention to his age. But yeah, still crushing it. So yeah, I'm fast approaching 50, Eddie. So it's uh, not Stop all. Stop it. <laughs> no. 25, not a day over. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then Alice Forster took the win for the ladies in a good time of 29 minutes and two seconds. And I think that's on the oh, Isle of Man or Isle of White. So, yeah, very interesting. That'd be good. Scrabbling around for other results, I thought we would, I'd have a dip in to see who had been doing part run because there were lots of part runs going on. I know people love Christmas Day part run and New Year's yeah. Day part run. So I went and had a little look. Couldn't find your name in the top 10 stats, Gary, for well, this week. Uh, uh, not this week for the park run. Uh, park run Riverside was the men's fastest time, Chris Perkins in 14.46. And I got excited because I saw Riverside and I was like, oh, is that Durham Riverside Durham. where I knew you'd been running? But then we decided it was probably Chesterley Street, which is only just up the road. Yeah. But um, was it? 14.46. That's 14.46. Oh. And then the ladies was Harriet Bloor at Eastbourne in 16.51. What amazes me is that people run so fast at a park run because yeah. the course Horses are often random, aren't they? You yeah. do a little loop there, and then you turn that corner, and then you go down, the old lady sitting there, and you turn around her, and then just to the ice cream kiosk, and then, <laughs> there, and then up the little hill. Oh, we're not running down that bank this week. We're going that yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> the park run I did, uh, Durham Park Run. So tell me about the Durham Park Run. What's the course? Let me relive my... Oh, yes. Well, you're very familiar with Maiden Castle, your glory yeah. days. Um, and you start at the back of Maiden Castle. Okay. And you run around, um, I suppose, the rugby fields. You yeah. take, and then you come back to Maiden Castle. You jump. I saw onto you crossing a, the bridge. Yeah, you jump onto the, the trail, then you cross the bridge, and then you kind of weave away around. I think it's the rowing club. You end up kind of down that part of Durham, uh, and then the uh, north side of the river. Yeah. And then you're running towards the city, you cross over another bridge, and then we do a kind of a 90 degree turn back to where the bandstand is. Do you remember that? On yeah, the right yeah, hand yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. So the cricket pitches are there. Yeah. And you finish there. A lovely, yeah, really nice course. I wouldn't say it's particularly a fast course if you're it must for be it. wet. Well, it wasn't too bad actually. Um, the weather was okay then, but yeah, if it had been a real rotten day, um, that wouldn't have been great. The only thing I, I always think when I visualize park run, it's a lot of the social as well as the run. And I think through no fault of Durham Park Runs, the it's changed. I think it used to pretty much start and finish in Maiden Castle, and you can go to the toilets, have a cup of coffee, yeah, and this yeah. and that. It's yeah. a bit disjointed now, as far as that's concerned. Where you where you finish is a little bit of a walk back to uh, Maiden Castle. So maybe not as, as much fun as the old course, but yeah, it was great. I do enjoy Park Run, but I don't do very many of them. But a friend of mine, this is 500th Park Run. That was his uh, achievement. The day before, I didn't realize it was such a um, such a big milestone. 15 year run streak which um, I'm not too sure what, I know some people have a mile a day, some people have like a 5k as a minimum. But yeah, Paul William Smith, my goodness me, well done. <laughs> 15 years. Going? Is he carrying on? And yeah, yeah, he, he sent me a, a little screen grab. It must be some Garmin group of run streakers. And um, he is second 
worldwide at the moment. The guy who's in the league is quite a uh, way in the league, but yeah, currently second in the world. And I think he's well, definitely first in the UK. It's an American guy who's actually in the league for 15 you know years. What? I, I, have a, I have in my radar when I'm older and the kids are a bit older is the number of, I think it's 51 consecutive marathons. Okay. It's a women's world record. Ooh. I'm like, I wonder, I wonder if, like, <laughs> would I walk every day, get up? And, I, and I, I've gone as far in a long run, you know, when your mind wants to like yeah. plan the marathon route to be like, would you run the same route every day and like get up, you know, like six o'clock in the morning and you'd go and you'd run it so that then you'd have like max, honestly, I've gone this far, max time for like recovery. And like, would you run laps? Would you just run like so many five, five K laps? Do they have to be um, official events or not just to marathon no, I distance? Think, I, I can't think it would be, would it? Maybe no, I need to look into it more, but I was like, Oh, watch this space, listeners. No, <laughs> no, I'd have to be, you'd, this would be a, you'd have to really, it'd have to be the one thing, wouldn't it? In your life, because yeah. It's, yeah. it's also the sort of thing that you go, oh, I could do that. I could I do that? <laughs> There'd be a lot of people doing these accumulators at the moment. I know, um, I'm pretty sure it's Cockburn events. They do one. And currently where we at the fourth, four miles today that seems fine but come the end of the month when you're doing a 21 mile 22 mile 23 mile oh my goodness me i no. stay clear of any anything beginning with accumulation street <laughs> uh <generally laughs> they're two different things like you say they're two different things if i am trying to peak in a race then um, I can't, I just can't do that because it's, I don't think it's going to do me any good as far as performance concerned. But if that was my thing I was going yeah, for. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Another big thought I had, it was that um, it has to be your thing, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think if you get invested in that and that's what you want to do, but you yeah. can't do it as part of, of uh, as a training program because <laughs> it needs to be your event, doesn't it? And that you can't be like, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that because yeah commit to one thing that's a good life lesson as well especially for me i've always doing that like just one thing eddie just commit to one thing yeah. right we thought with new year i'm not big on new year's resolutions gary i'm not big on new year new me because frankly you don't get better than us really do you get better now no i thought instead we'd have a little think we'd have a little um i'd ask you a little question about maybe what you're grateful for for last year uh or even just this last few days <laughs> A little bit of, we start the new year show with a little bit of gratefulness. Gratitude, that's the word. Gratitude. It? It's a wonderful thing. It's that's a wonderful thing to talk about. That's what my kids say in their mixed French and English where they like don't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so lucky we've got a good bunch of friends, running friends. We're all pretty similar. Um, not in our world view, but we, you know, we get along. <laughs> and you know, my main kind of partner in crime is, is Neil or Rob Wolf. And I just, yeah, it's just so grateful for these friendships, really, and just to, to highlight this. And we casually talked about having another go at Bob Graham round, a winter Bob Graham round on a anti clockwise to make it different, obviously, to the previous attempt. Very low key. And um, he just knocked on my door maybe two weeks ago. And I just kind of planted the seed. And without hesitation, he was, I'm in. And um, I just thought when you got mates like that, <laughs> just uh, yeah, it, it's just perfect. So yeah, definitely close friendships. It's been good. And what is also amazing, I didn't grow up with a lot of these people. Running kind of brought us together. You know, if you get opportunities to do things and meet new people, I'd always you know give it a go because you just never know where it's gonna where it's gonna I end think, up. I think running is running. You know, we all love running, but running friendships yeah. are often people you perhaps wouldn't be friends with in yeah. other walks of life or wouldn't meet as well. Yeah. But you have this deep bond of I always think it's like the suffering, isn't it? Yeah. You've suffered together <laughs> deeply. You've been through things that you know you can't explain you've got in jokes you've got yeah. out jokes you know each other you've seen bits of each other perhaps that you wouldn't have shown to other people yeah. as well it's really healthy because sometimes your social group <clears throat> can become a bit of an echo chamber with people that you maybe studied with um you've got same politics as but running throws you everybody together and you've got this unifying thing that is running um but lots of different lifestyle choices outside of running but yeah you you muddle on together and uh and you have the best chats 
best chance. A bit like when you're driving, because you're looking forward and you not have to make eye contact. Yeah. Often the best stories are shared. Oh wow. Outrageous yeah. stories. <laughs> can't oh, can't repeat them. <laughs> what goes on the trail stays on the trail, but. I love that, Gary. What a lovely, what a lovely thought. It's like Radio 2 when they do Thought of the Day. We're becoming quite reflective in our old age on Run for the Hills. I do I spend a lot of time? I'm looking, I'm glad I never started crying because I do get quite sensitive. In my get your Nivea cream. I've just bought myself some new. I don't you think my skin's looking nice today? I was going to mention I, that, actually. I smashed out 13 euros I spent Ooh. on a face cream. I've been using this like this cream and it hasn't had SPF in and I've been got away with it because we haven't had any sun. I'm like, you can't, you know, where I live and I'm going to look like the old ladies I see down town. <laughs> proper weathered faces in Capo. I'm like, I've got to get my... Gotta be careful. Good, you know, I don't spend... I don't have any makeup, as you know, Gary. You have to look at me like this. I don't spend any money, but I think a good face cream. There's my top tip for 2022. <laughs> a good face cream. But what were you yourself, Eddie? What are you, what are you grateful for? I was really grateful that though I know I moaned about it over the Christmas period was having that time with my family, with the kids and everybody being after a turbulent few years with COVID and disruptions. And we've had quite, we've got away with it a lot here because, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere and the school, yeah. French schools have carried on. The kids only really missed like three weeks of school totally. And even now with COVID restrictions, they don't have to do all their self, you know, if someone in their class has COVID, they can, anyway, it's, it's just a bit different, but the kids have come out of it totally unscathed yeah we, um and they've had a few big disappointments with not being able to see grandparents and that sort of thing but they are i was really grateful over the christmas period that we had time with them and that they were turning into three of the um three very resilient little but wonderful little um little little humans um yeah that, well, I'll share something I wouldn't normally share, but um, Bryn's parents meant to come and stay and Bryn's mum got COVID in the last second. They were oh, literally on their way. And so they couldn't come. And so that was a big disappointment for the kids because it was their Christmas sort of, they were coming for Christmas or just after yeah. Christmas. And the first thing they said was, oh, we hope grandma's okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that showed, you know, for all my whining about my kids <laughs> and uh, oh my God, they're doing my head in, that uh, they're, uh, they're turning into people that are thinking about others. And, Very thoughtful, yeah. Yeah, and that, I think that as a parent is something that you do want. You When you see that, you're like, oh God, it is worth all that. Yeah, that's wonderful, that is, Eddie. Oh, that, anyway. anyway, let's move to back to running. <laughs> what you got coming up, Gary? Oh, it's the big one, the, the Thornley. Big one. Oh, that's early in the year to be the big one. <laughs> I know, yeah. Well, I was a bit disappointed because I, I didn't enter all monks. And then when I thought, yes, I'm going to enter it, entries had closed. They could do done entries on the day, but I didn't fancy taking a chance. Anyway, moving on to this weekend, um, we've got Thornley XC. So I won't do one of my workouts that was planned. I'll do Thornley XC as that workout. So 10K Thornley Hall Farm Cross Country Course. Oh, Eddie, you would love it. It is, especially when it's wet like this. Oh. Up and down, you know, you kind of shin deep mud. <clears throat> For pretty much the rest of the year, it's just a, a, a working farm with cows churning up the, the land and stuff like that. Tractors going through little gates. So there's there's one point in particular where if you go through there three times without losing the shoe, then that so, is yeah, the result. Are you going to take your shoe on? I love that. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I've got to clean them. My goodness, I can't forget to clean my spikes before before Saturday. Um, but for Sedgefield, because that's our, that is our closest fixture and we are still top of the league, so we need a big team effort because the last fixture is at Anik, which is the furthest away for us. So, you know, on a Saturday, yeah. over an hour's journey up to Anik, it's that a big was, ask to, yeah. to get to get a a team out and a strong team so we really need to um we i think we could if we have a really really good show on saturday secure promotion i don't want to kind of speak too soon but i think yeah that could be on the cards times. the thing with the third division if you put out an incomplete team your, your points any mm. any um kind of chances of promotion are, are gone after that so we just really need to do a good show thorny farm and then put out a full, at least a full team, or get six people to finish the race over Anik, um, and then Division Two cross country uh, next season, which would be pretty awesome for you know Sedgefield. That would be great. But I think that's it for me. What about yourself? 
base build i'm hoping we got so we've had this like really weird weather we had um it was really really cold over christmas like proper for you know you know you all know because of you know, <laughs> wanged on about it but then it's got really warm and literally it's unheard of that i'm able to like drive without gloves on you know the kids have gone to school with uh one of them went to school with trainers on today yeah um so it's coming though the cold weather so i'm a bit disappointed because i had this you know i was like i can get on my skis the kids have been skiing and all i've been doing is being a taxi driver <laughs> but it's just rain so now it's just ice i mean oh. it's lethal so but do not fear listeners because end of this week we're back into the minus 10s snow's coming so hopefully less swifting more skiing and more more of the base building so january yeah. i'm doing this week of like just getting back into it preparation week um and then without any like proper session oh i did think of you though because i did uh i did some 30 second sprints yes and like oh my god my my butt my hamstrings <laughs> they're only six and by the sixth one i was like oh yeah, Ooh, then yeah. Just running home i was like oh i feel like someone's kicked me up the butt um i've got uh, sore pecs after i did my press-ups yesterday uh, Oh, and that's the first time since Valencia I've done anything like that. Oh, oh, that's quite, that's a long time, Gary. Yeah, I know. No way. Yeah, that doms is going to be real. Anyway, <laughs> ca- ca- hoping for some so, carrying on the base building, getting back into routine and um, catching up. And, and I love catching up with clients as we start because we have... We have that kind of time in December, don't we, in the UK kind of racing calendar where everyone's kind of just treading water, waiting. But now... Yeah. For April races, now it starts. Now it starts, you know. There's a proper focus. You feel a new focus about it. Yeah. Also, last thing, i got to get to my Pilates class, but um, I've noticed it's a bit lighter in the evening. Oh, 100%. I was doing yeah, the maths yeah. on the... I was looking at the app and the sunrise and sunset, and it's you get a minute either side of the day, and within, you know, like I say, a couple of weeks, uh, you really notice the difference. It's brilliant. Best of luck to former podcast guests to the, on the Spine Race. We've got Anna Troop Racing. We've got yeah. Damien Hall Racing. We've got yet to come on the podcast, but I know she's desperate to, Debbie martin Consani. Yeah. I, try, I couldn't find a race entry list, but if you are listening and you're going to do the Spine Race or any of the Spine... Um, uh, what the, the spine challenger any of the other races we wish you safe and um pleasant journey <laughs> of course, I don't think it's gonna be pleasant <laughs> but i hope the weather gods are in your favor the wind is in your favor it's not too much it's not too muddy um you're strong strong stay focused put the blinkers on a lot of dot watching my goodness me lots of dot watching come up we also got country to capital one of um the south england's premier uk uh opening ultra race of the year starts in wendover and runs all the way into paddington oh you quite enjoy it probably gary i love that one first half is um 22 miles over cross country and it's not marks it's just 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 an absolute (laughs) mud fest normally and people running everywhere going now because when i i've done it a couple of times and when i did it was before that's how long it was gpx watches so you actually had to read the route map um uh, now it's on GPX, so it's not quite as uh, daunting. So you run like 22 miles over cross country, can be really muddy, um, and then you hit the canal and you basically run into the canal for 21 miles into London. It's like a time trial. Yeah. So you've got to run the first half savvy, fuel, not get too tired, not get too muddy, and hit that canal, yeah. put on some ACDC, and you can time trial it all the way into London. But that canal does some <laughs> us. It's a good race, that one, but it's early. It's an early race to be on form in January. So a couple of good races coming up to look. We look forward to reading res- the results over the next couple of weeks. Along with our New Year vibe to the show, there's not really been a New Year vibe, has there, Gary? We thought we might introduce a little birthday shout-outs for each month at the end of each month, or maybe at the start, but because this month we're kind of starting it now. But if it's your birthday in January or your running mate's birthday in January and you want to give them a shout-out, send us a message um, on Facebook. Don't put it on the Facebook page because we want it to be a surprise. So send us a, a DM on f- Facebook, either Gary Thwaites or Edwina Sutton. We'll pick them up. And at the end of each month, we will read out this week this month we'll read out january's but then from then on we'll try and do it at the beginning of the month we thought that might be a nice way to have a yeah if you made a bit of a well or if you just want to give yourself a birthday shout out we're not (laughs) 
And if it's a belated birthday, you know, hey, we'll we'll, uh, we'll give it a shout out too. Yeah, yeah, as long as it's not like six months out of date. <laughs> it's my birthday in April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much to Cheer Charge for sponsoring the show. If you enjoy uh, listening to our twittering, please head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. I'm Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. Long pause there. He was just checking who he was. And let's <laughs> run to the hills. I was wondering if it was episode 70 or 71. Oh, I didn't say it was episode 71. We can keep this all in the show, Gary. People love it. It's real life, man. Also, by the way, that was episode 71.